Well, today I've been working on combo timers and also distributing damage. Um, this is how it worked in Songbringer, and I like this system because, uh, um, whoa, there we go. I like the system because it can affect multiple entities kind of in a in a neat way. See how like I just uh, attack these pillars right here a little bit. Let's attack these ones too. It's distributing the amount of damage that the sword will do across those entities. Um, it has some sorting that goes on and uh, preferences. Like it sorts sorts by enemy types and um, the distance from this this the sword stuff like that. So it prioritizes which entities will get the damage. But it's neat how it distributes it. Um, and then we've also got uh, an attack flag in the, the attack system. So when you do something like a charge attack, you charge up, you let go for this powerful blow. That does maximum damage for each one of the times it deals, deals damage. So um, when it finds like three entities, for example, that it wants to do damage to, it does the same amount of damage to all of them. So it's sort of like a bomb blast or an explosive damage rather than just being sort of like a distributed damage. So multiple types of uh, distributed damage can be had. And on, and then we've also got the, um, <clears throat> the combo timers now. So in the bottom left, it says sword.combo is zero. And then we've got uh, the combo timer below it. And then I've also the, the blink combo and the blink combo timer. So the way the sword combo works is if you hit something, your combo starts going up. So now I've, I've been hitting these pillars here. I'm already up to combo number five. Uh, and then if the combo timers go to zero, it sets the combo back to zero. And also if you whiff, so if let's say we've got the combo timer built up to four there, we go over here and we whiff, the combo goes back to zero. So there's multiple ways the sword combo can be uh, reset there. And all that does is in, the, in the game is it actually uh, it allows you to attack a little bit faster. So if you actually, uh, if I just sit here whiffing the whole time, my uh, attack, the time, I think it's the the uh, the cooldown or, yeah, it's a combination of like cooldown and timing of the attack and things like that. Basically, allow, having this combo timer allows the sword to be used faster if you're comboing it. See that? Yeah, I can kind of feel it. Um, I can feel that I'm actually attacking faster rather than it taking so long to attack each time. Uh, that is something very important. Uh, it's something I'd never had in Songbringer until the very end, actually f just after release. This is version like 1.01. .01. I added this this whole like sword comboing and blink comboing, and it really makes the game a lot more fun because you can just get in the sort of a momentum and a rhythm of things, and it feels really good. So I want to have this, uh, this Wraithbinder is going to be a sword, like, primarily your first weapon will be the sword. And you'll also have your shield that you can use. But sword and shield mechanics, those are going to be the most important things to have really, really good and really fun. So, um, adding these combo timers is going to be great. Uh, let's take a look at the blink combo too. That's the sword. We've got to find where the heck the, the blink is. It's random, so it changes. Um, maybe it's down here. There we go. Okay, we got the blink orb. Um, now we can blink. Okay, so the way the blink orb works is as your blink combo goes up, you can actually blink faster. So I've, I, I blink the first time, and this is about the rhythm, right? If I, if I, uh, I'm, hold on, let's see. Anyways, you can blink a little bit faster as you, um, as your combo goes up. And the way the blink combo works is it just, um, as long as you get another blink within that combo timer window, it will up the combo. But as, if the combo timer runs out, it goes back to zero, and that's all there is to it. So that's how the blink combo works, and it's also quite awesome to have. It just feels really good to blink a little bit faster as you're, as you're using the button more often. So, um, important things to have in here for Wraithbinder being a multiplayer songbringer spin-off in the sense that we're going to have the same kind of sword combat in songbringer that you have here in in wraithbinder so let's take a look at some of the code um i took the attack component and actually broke it up and i've realized that some of these variables here in the attack component are just meant to be just for the sword so certain lots of entities won't need to use this uh like uh well basically any any entity that can attack but doesn't have a sword uh, so I, I need to put these other variables here in a more organized place too. Some of these, like the delay, duration, timer, uh, those kinds of things, those all 
mostly have to do with either the sword or the blink. So there's more organization to be done. But this is a good start to have these broken up, right? So we've got the for the sword, we've got the the number, the stance number, the combo, combo duration, combo timer, um, and then we've also got a charge tick and charge release tick, which I'm going to be changing to a timer. Um, and then we've also got uh, for the blink orb, we've got the combo, combo duration, and combo timer. So those are broken up a little bit. And let's look at how the combo timer is used. That's an attack system. Attack system, this is the tick attack for each entity. So the attack system just loops over each entity, calls this method. Um, it runs the combo timers. So really all the, all those combo timers are is just like uh, subtracting an amount of time. And once it hits zero, then we zero out the timer or the combo. Uh, so we run that combo timer for both the sword and the blink orb. And then this is where it damages other entities. If this uh, entity has a damage, um, a variable value uh, and um, it hits some other en it, it checks whether it hits entities and then we've also we're collecting the um, the entities that it tried to hit in the EADS variable so then we can determine that oh um, this is the sword and um, it hit them so the combo timer goes up and if it whiffs the combo timer goes back to zero so that's really all there is to that um, there's also the, the distribute damage, which I was talking about uh, earlier, where, where, like, for example, if the sword hits three or four, even just two entities, whenever it hits multiple entities, it goes and sorts out the EADs, and it sorts them by priority, like I was mentioning. Uh, hit points are taken into account, the um, whether they're an opponent or not, and the distance. And then it sorts them. Oh, I had to create the sort... Um, because kit foo is super basic and minimal, I created my own sort. So I'm trying to basically the way to compile fast is to not use the STL. <laughs> and this is something I learned at the beginning of this project. Um, you can compile so dang fast. C++ compiles just as fast as C, um, as long as you're using very, very minimal headers. So I write, uh, I've been writing a lot of my own stuff for this project called kit foo, basically, which is just like a basis or an engine wrapper. So, but anyways, I wrote a, a sort. This actually, I didn't even write this. I just took this from RDE STL. If you didn't know about that, this is a really cool project where they're also trying to doing the same thing. They're taking the, they're taking the STL and just making it their own and making it really simple, really lightweight, and but still functional and still very much like uh, the STL syntax. Uh, once again, uh, we're going over the distribute damage, and this is applying available damage. So it goes and it checks on um, it's. It gets the starts with an amount of available damage, right? You pass that, which is passed in, and then it loops over each one of the entities that it could apply those damages to. And then once it, uh, it goes through and checks flags and things like that, if it has that damage maximum flag, which I was talking about earlier, then it always sets the damage to be the original available. So even if the available gets decremented, which we'll see here in a second, it will still be using the maximum damage. Um, and this is where it's distributing the damage. And if there's a single entity, then it uses the available damage. If there's multiple entities, then if it's the first entity, it uses half the damage, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but I found this to be qu uh, quite a cool way to do it in Songbringer. It seemed to work out really well. Um, and once again, this has a lot to do with how the entities are weighted and sorted. So, um, and then for the remaining entities, it just takes the available and divides it by the number of entities. Um, and then... Um, and then it also makes sure the damage is at least one. And then it goes and calls a health delta, which is just basically pushing back a, a health delta into a structure so that when the health system actually ticks, that's when it actually applies any differences to the health system. So we're not using any kind of weird hidden systems. We're putting all the right, the, the health, the stuff that happens for the health system happens in the health system. That's the point of that. So that's it. That's all the code I wanted to show you this time. Galactic friend, thanks for watching.